Jackson State is sitting at the top of the mountaintop right now. Just beating FAMU last week. And now they sit undefeated in the SWAC conference over on the East Division side. They got another Florida foe that they got to play against this weekend, which is Bethune-Cookman. Now, I know many of you out there like, oh, coach, Bethune-Cookman, so we can get off the bus and be ready to go ahead and get that work and put it on them. I'm like, guys, you know what? Never underestimate your opponent. Never sleep on anybody when you lacing them up and getting out there on the field because there's always something that could be in that trick bag that you might not be paying any attention to. And we're going to talk about exactly what both teams are going to need to do in order for them to secure this win this weekend. And we're going to talk about it right after this. You know it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow League Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. You know what positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump on in this thing. Because I'm like, Coach, what you got on this thing? Listen. I'm sitting here, I'm just scouring around, checking out some things. You know, as, as they, you know, uh, as a lot of folks were saying last week, they went in there and, you know, they took over somebody's trap last week. So I got to check my traps to make sure I got everything on point as far as the direction that I'm looking to go with this thing here. And there's a few things that kind of, how can I put this, kind of had me scratching my head a little bit. You know, just trying to figure out like, okay, could could can we see a change up Gary to happen here? Because, I mean, when you looked at that Bethune-Cookman game versus Mississippi Valley State last week, that game was a lot more difficult than what it really needed to be. And I say that because of the fact that you had a quarterback on one side that wasn't able to complete passes as well as the quarterback on the other side. But you had one quarterback in particular that loves to try to be Superman. It don't need to be. All he needed to do was play within the system and allow the playmakers around him to make the plays and allow things to flow smoothly. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I got a couple of takeaways from the game as far as how I think things are going to size up this week. Now, Bethune-Cookman, they're definitely going to try to find a way on defense to bring pressure against the Jack State offensive line, trying to get Jacoby Morgan a little rattled back there in the backfield as far as him not being able to complete passes to the Jack State receivers downfield or have him throw an errant pass where they can pick it off and give the offense extra opportunity to put points on the board. Yes, I love saying that phrase because basically when you're on defense, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to find a way to get your offense more bites at the apple for them to put points on the board for you to build a lead and possibly win the game. And let's say that I was watching the Mississippi Valley State game and they were bringing the extra pressure against Mississippi Valley State, but they weren't able to get back there and rattle the quarterback, which was something that I was just like, wait a minute, okay, what's really going on here? On a few occasions, they, I, I'm not going to say every time they weren't able to, but on a few occasions, they were finally able to get back there and shake some things up as far as uh, the quarterback, you know, throwing Aaron passes down the field, or better yet, he just overthrew the receiver. There was times where, in this one particular clip here, where you see the uh, Bethune-Cookman defensive backs, they don't know their assignments as far as coverage out there on the field. And had had the, had the Mississippi Valley State quarterback been able to connect on those passes, the receiver catching the ball, oh, it, this, thing, this thing would have been totally different than, was it, three to, three to nothing going into the second quarter? I mean, it's, it's just so many different variables there that had me, you know, looking at like, okay, Valley got something going on there, but they just can't. Find a way to execute. And this week, is that's the word for Jackson State. You're going to have to execute. You can't come out there playing with these guys. You can't come out there with your head down. You can't think just because you're getting off the bus, you know, hey, man, they ain't really did nothing over here. Hey, we can get off the bus. We're going to be straight. We can go in here and kick these folks in the mouth. We're going to be good to go. No, they're coming back to punch, too. And the reason why I say that is because of the fact that even though, even though uh, you're dealing with a left-handed quarterback and Cam, Ram Cam Ransom, this young man, like I stated, uh, well, I did state this young man threw the ball during that game four times, excuse me, seven times completing four for 19 yards and had an interception. Now, there are some things that really left me a little bothered as far as some things that I saw because I was just like, wait a minute, man, you, you, can't, you can't play ball like that. Oftentimes, he tried to find ways where he tried to get rid of the ball instead of taking a sack and living to play another down. Um, oftentimes, you know, it's like, Instead of, you know, he run, they run, Bethune-Cookman likes to run RPO. 
So instead of giving it to the back and let him run it, he likes to pull it and run it himself. And oftentimes when he do that, the defense is already setting up, waiting on him to come. And guess what? He puts the ball on the ground. So that is something I'm just like, okay, we got we got to really find a happy medium there. But I give Coach Woody credit. Coach Woody said, you know what? Let me do this. I'm going to bring in my quarterback from last year, Luke Sprague, who Sprague came in the second quarter, got everything jumped off for the Bethune-Cookman football team to, you know, get things moving on that offense, in which he threw the ball eight times, completing three for 73 yards, and had one touchdown pass. The one thing that I did see, Dennis Palmer, the running back for Bethune-Cookman, that young man ran that ball 23 times for 126 yards. Now, that lets me know that they don't have a problem with trying to get out there and pound that dirt, letting everybody know, hey, listen, y'all going to have to stop this running game. But the one thing that I do, I, I kind of wonder if Coach Woody would do it, is Cam, Cam Ransom is a big guy. He, he, he's a big guy to be a quarterback. Not saying he can't play the position, but I'm like, man, this young man loved to run the ball. Why not incorporate that a little bit more into your offense? Why not allow Cam Ransom to actually get back in the backfield and run with your running backs? I mean, you know, switch it up a little bit. If Sprague is ready to play, then let's put Sprague out there underneath center and allow Cam Ransom to come out here and play a position that I think, hey, if this young man ever learned how to hold on to that ball and really can tote that thing, I think he might be able to go play up on the next level at a running back position because guess what? He has the size for it. But that's just me thinking outside the box. Don't pay me no mind. But... I say all of that to say this, uh, looking at uh, uh, back, and I, I'm going to switch back to uh, as far as like the, the, the Bethune-Cookman defense. Now, Bethune-Cookman defense, they do have, they got some they got some ballers out there. I got to give them some credit. They got a couple of playmakers out there, Raymond Woody III, uh, which I believe he's the free safety, and you got uh, number 14, Kevin Washington, who is, um, he's I believe he's the linebacker. And then, no, Kev, Kevin Washington, yeah, I think Kevin Washington is a linebacker or he's a a cornerback, and he got Andrew Vollmer, who is um, he's a de he's a defensive back as well. That young man can drop back in the coverage and try to you know shake some things up as far as you know you put a ball out there, he could possibly get his hands on that ball and pick it off. Now Kevin Washington, on the other hand, you running that ball, he coming downhill to hit you. I'm just being honest with you, Woody Woody the third, he's the zip line on the defense. He's going to try to make sure that nothing gets past him. So those are the three that you're going to see out there on. The field that's going to be looking to bring some pressure against that Jack State defensive, excuse me, that Jack State offensive front to try and stir things up in this game. Now, as far as the defensive linemen, I mean, like I said, they, you got the guys out there, they're trying to put in work and make some things happen out there on the field. One thing that I did see that there was a few times where they brought extra players uh, on a blitz and they didn't get in the backfield. Now, I can honestly say this looking at how Jack State runs their offense they will definitely find a way to have those receivers go into those open areas where the defensive players just left and just dink and dump the ball off, and they just keep moving that ball down the field. I mentioned how the defensive backs for Bethune-Cookman, they get lost on their assignments. I think they um, Mississippi Valley State ran a three receivers to the left, one to the right, max protection to the left, and um, you had everybody, you know, you had the receivers run their routes, and then you had the running back leak out the backfield where you had three guys covering one, one standing by itself next to another receiver who had a defensive back behind him. I'm like, guys, th this thing here is, is so crazy. If people just pay attention to the, the, the small things, the little things, the little nuances out there, it, it can really change some things as far as what you're looking to do within your team, you know, with your team and within the program. I definitely look to see Bethune-Cookman run that ball a little bit more this week, especially with Dennis Palmer out there on the field. Cam, uh, not Cam Russell, but uh, uh, um, Sprague. Luke Sprague is not going to run the ball. He's going to more so be, he's going to be the maestro out there looking to direct the players where they need to go and put the ball out there to them for them to catch passes uh, out there on the field, especially if they're throwing the ball. Uh, another guy to, to pay attention to out there, a receiver for uh, Bethune-Cookman is Malik, uh, Malik Huggins. You need to check him out as well. Make sure that he's well covered and keep an eye on him as far as certain things that he could do also. So that th those, are, those are the things that I saw on offense and defense as far as with Bethune-Cookman, what they're going to look to try to do. Uh, oh, another thing, they love to try to pull those uh, their linemen. Big number 79, Antoine Wells. Hey, when you see that load coming, you better duck. 
you better freaking duck because if you don't, he going to take your lunch. He's going to take your lunch. So defensive linemen as well as the defensive ends for Jackson State, keep your head on a swivel. To make, keep your head on a swivel to make sure you know when that lineman is coming, when he's pulling to come at you. Because guess what? They're going to send him to try to kick you out to allow the running back to get around their edge. Um, another thing, defensive ends, you cannot be lazy on the plays this weekend. Not saying that's what you guys are doing over there at Jack State. I don't want nobody to think I'm I'm just trying to poo-poo on something. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to you is this is the week where they're going to try to run a lot of different stunts at that defensive line trying to get those running backs free. They're going to do a lot of trapping. They're going to do a lot of pulling. You're going to see a lot of different things going on as far as them trying to overload with protection that allow the running back to run the ball off their backside, whichever direction it is that they're looking to go. So just keep your mind on that and understand exactly what's coming at you. I'm sure everybody watched film already, but Coach is giving a breakdown as far as what I'm seeing thus far, as far as some of the stuff that they've been doing throughout the season. Um, last, uh, Jackson State, you got to come out with the same intensity on both sides of the ball that you did against Florida, I mean, not about to say Florida State, against Florida AM. and And y'all got to score, 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 score. You got to punch that ball in. Don't come out there playing with that same intensity that Bethune Cookman might be coming out there to play with. Because guess what? They're gonna come out there and try and play on your level for probably about probably about the first quarter. Or so just to feel y'all out to see what you're doing. If you guys are zero to zero with them in the first quarter and they feel like this is gonna be a dog fight, it's gonna be a long game. That's not something you want to see. You want to get out here, put your foot, hey, belt the ass like y'all doing last week. Y'all whooping ass with the damn belt. Y'all better belt the ass this thing and get and boat race this thing and get it up on out of here real quick. Because if not, these guys are going to build their confidence up and they're going to feel that they can come and play with y'all. Trust me, they still feel some type of way about that game they lost to Clark Atlanta where they was up on them guys all game long and Clark Atlanta came back. Do not be what Bethune-Cookman was against Clark Atlanta and allow this team to come back and jump in Jump up on you, on, jump up on you in a game and get this bad boy where now all of a sudden you need help in the East Division to make sure that you're able to win uh, to play in the SWAC championship. That's all coach is saying. But um, Jacoby Morgan, <clears throat> be smart with the ball. Make sure you hold on to the ball. Hey, if if it's not there, when you when you're rolling out with that ball, make sure you hold that ball, son. Uh, because they're definitely they're gonna be trying to come strip it from you. I'm just gonna tell you now, go try to come smack it out your hands. So just make sure you're, you're good with the ball. Now, what they I do like about what Jack State did last week, running the ball with uh, looking at Bethune Cookman's defensive front. If Coach T. C. Taylor put Irv, Mug, Irv Mulligan and Imari in the backfield, I hope I pronounced the young man's name correctly. If he put them two back there in the backfield together and go power ball, oh my God, Whew, that's gonna be a problem. That's going to be a problem. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to be a problem. But, you know, I, I'm wishful thinking. I'm not going to get beside myself because right now I, got, I feel like the hairs on my arms is, is, is raised up right now. I am getting I am getting goosebumps thinking about that because watching that young man, Herb Mulligan, run that ball last week and J, J.D. Martin, like I stated before, you put either two of them damn running backs in the backfield. Oh, my God. It's going to be problems. But we're going to hold off on that. We're going we're gonna to hold off on that. Yeah, Imari Matthews. You put Matthews and Mulligan in the backfield. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But um, and the only reason why I say it is because Bethune Cookman has some issue with gap containment on defense. Just I'm calling it the way I see it. Don't get upset with coach. Just put it out there. But uh, Jack State, like I stated before, you guys got to run that rock. Make sure you hold on to the ball. Offensive line, you got to fire off. Do your thing. Make sure you're containing and handle business in the manner which you need to handle it. Jack State receivers, uh, Fertillion, um, who else we got? Uh, Fertillion, um, uh, Fertillion, Henderson, uh, Dupree, Land. Definitely look to see Bethune Cookman run that ball a little bit more this week, especially with Dennis Palmer out there on the field. Cam, uh, not Cam Russell, but uh, uh, um, Sprague. Luke Sprague is not going to run the ball. He's going to more so be he's going to be the maestro out there looking to direct the players where they need to go and put the ball out there to them for them to catch passes uh, out there on the field, especially if they're throwing the ball. Uh, another guy to, to pay attention to out there, a receiver for – uh, Bethune Cookman is Malik uh, Malik Huggins. You need to check him out as well. Make sure that he's well covered and 
keeping an eye on him as far as certain things that he could do also. So that those, those are those are the things that I saw on offense and defense as far as with Bethune Cookman, what they're gonna look to try to do. Uh oh, another thing, they love to try to pull those uh their linemen. Big number 79, Antoine Wells. Hey, when you see that load coming, you better duck. You better freaking duck. Cause if you don't, he gonna take your lunch. He's gonna take your lunch. So Defensive linemen as well as the defensive ends for Jackson State. Keep your head on a swivel to make keep your head on a swivel to make sure you know when that lineman is coming, when he's pulling to come at you. Because guess what? They're gonna send him to try to kick you out to allow the running back to get around their edge. Um, another thing, defensive ends, you cannot be lazy on the plays this weekend. Not saying that's what you guys are doing over there at Jack State. I don't want nobody to think I'm I'm just trying to poo-poo on something. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to you is this is the week where they're going to try to run a lot of different stunts at that defensive line trying to get those running backs free. They're going to do a lot of trapping. They're going to do a lot of pulling. You're going to see a lot of different things going on as far as them trying to overload with protection and allow the running back to run the ball off their backside, whichever direction it is that they're looking to go. So just keep your mind on that and understand exactly what's coming at you. I'm sure everybody watched film already, but Coach is giving a breakdown as far as what I'm seeing thus far as far as some of the stuff that they've been doing throughout the season. Um, last, uh, Jackson State, you got to come out with the same intensity on both sides of the ball that you did against Florida, I mean, I about to say Florida State, against Florida A&M. And, and y'all got to score, 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 score. Y'all got to punch that ball in. Don't come out there playing with that same intensity that Bethune-Cookman might be coming out there to play with because guess what? They're going to come out there and try and play on your level probably about – Probably about the first quarter or so, just to feel y'all out to see what you're doing. If you guys are zero to zero with them in the first quarter and they feel like this is going to be a dog fight, it's going to be a long game. That's not something you want to see. You want to get out here, put your foot, hey, belt the ass like y'all doing last week. Y'all whooping ass with the damn belt. Y'all better belt the ass this thing and, get, and boat race this thing and get it up on out of here real quick. Because if not, these guys are going to build their confidence up and they're going to feel that they can come and play with y'all. Trust me. They still feel some type of way about that game they lost to Clark Atlanta where they was up on them guys all game long and Clark Atlanta came back. Do not be what Bethune-Cookman was against Clark Atlanta and allow this team to come back and jump in, jump up on you on, jump up on you in a game and get this bad boy where now all of a sudden you need help in the East Division to make sure that you're able to win uh, to play in the SWAC championship. That's all Coach is saying, but uh, Jacoby and Morgan, <clears throat> be smart with the ball. Make sure you hold on to the ball. Hey, if if it's not there, when you when you're rolling out with that ball, make sure you hold that ball, son. Uh, because they're definitely they're gonna be trying to come strip it from you. I'm just gonna tell you now, go try to come smack it out your hands. So just make sure you you're good with the ball. Now, what thing I do like about what Jack State did last week, running the ball with uh looking at Bethune Cookman's defensive front, if Coach T C Taylor put Irv Muck, Irv Mulligan. And Imari in the backfield, I hope I pronounced the young man's name correctly. If he put them two back there in the backfield together and go powerball, oh my God. That's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a problem. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's gonna be a problem. But you know, I, I'm wishful thinking. I'm not gonna get beside myself because right now I got I feel like the hairs on my arms is, is, is raised up right now. I'm getting I am getting goosebumps thinking about that because watching that young man, everybody get run that ball last week, and J, JD Martin. Like I stated before, you put either two of them damn running backs in the backfield. Oh my God. It's gonna be problems. But we're gonna hold off on that. We're gonna hold, we're gonna hold off on that. Yeah, Imari Matthews. You put Matthews and Mulligan in the backfield. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, ooh. But um and the only reason why I say it is because Bethune Cookman has some issue with gap containment on defense. Just I'm calling it the way I see it. Don't get upset with coach and just put it out there. But uh Jack State, like I stated before, you guys gotta run that rock. Make sure you hold on to the ball. Offensive line, you got to fire off. Do your thing. Make sure you're containing and handle business in a manner which you need to handle it. Jack State receivers. Fatillion, Fatillion Dupree, Terrell Jr. Uh, I said Dupree. I said Dupree. Barnett. Uh, it's it's going to be time for some folks to go ahead and get busy. And Henderson. It's going to be time for some people to get out there and showcase what they can do. Make sure you guys are smart as far as with your routes, catch with your hands. Don't let the balls, you know, don't let the balls get up in you and bounce up off your chest and everything's all over the place. They're definitely going to look to try to um, zone Fortillion out there on the field as far as coverage. So definitely the other receivers for Jackson State, they're going to be able to eat. You guys got to be ready to get to it. They, 
But through Cookman, I'm not gonna tell you no lie. One thing that I did see that kind of bothered me a little bit. They are very soft on each edge. You get around the edges is a wrap. I, I'm just being honest with you. I mean, hey, Coach, uh, Coach Woody, forgive me for you know <laughs> calling out what I'm saying, but I'm just giving just give me some takeaways as far as what I saw in the game, as far as what you guys, uh, what both teams are gonna need to do. Um, like I said before, but through Cookman, they're gonna have to fight. They gotta come with effort. They they got they they're gonna have to ha they're gonna have to come with effort want to get up the field to make sure they shut down anything that Jack State is looking to do and be able to put pressure on the quarterback and wrap up and make the tackles when they get the uh, receivers and the running backs they're in the vicinity to wrap if they are in the vicinity to tackle they need to wrap up the tackle quit playing these games trying to you know shoulder bump somebody or forearm knock somebody down wrap up a tackle dag on you use your tools like you're supposed to out there on the field again Jackson State. Y'all got to treat this like this is a business trip. Come out there ready to get this work. Go ahead, handle business, and then go ahead and do your thing after the fact. But through Cookman, y'all going to need to come out there like, you know, y'all like your hair on fire. Like you, you coming out here like this is your championship. You need to come out here ready to get after this thing and make something happen. If that's not what you're trying to do, guess what, guys? It's going to be a long game, and some folks going to be mad, and there's no need for none of that because guess what? You, you could have did what you need to do and make it happen. But, um, again, leave your comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts are as far as the commentary, uh, what we talked about here in the show. Uh, leave your score predictions as well. I got to get in contact with somebody um, about uh, last week. They called the score they called the score spot on last week. So I got to make sure I get, get a hold of that person. Um, I got your email to them. I'm going to give you a call back. I'm not going to get no name. I'm just saying I got to get in contact with you. But uh, I did get the email from you. So, I would definitely do that. But, uh, guys, like I said before, I appreciate you all for rocking with me. If you have not become a member of the channel, make sure you become a member of the channel. Tune in, tap in, tell a friend of a friend, tell them to come on in. Hey, we just having a good time over here. Everything that comes into the, uh, everything that comes into the channel for our donations, um, memberships, anything like that, I'm going to take that. I'm going to funnel that back out to you guys. Also, if you want to donate to this channel, Outside of becoming a member, I have a 501c3. You can, uh, uh, I can give you the letter, uh, depending upon what it is that you donate. I can give, the, give you the letter for you to write that off on your taxes. So that's not an issue as well. Also, another thing I want you to remember, please make sure you go over to the website, tlsportsnetwork.com. Make sure you register there and so that I have a way to contact you guys in case I'm looking to do something in a particular area or something like that. And I want to invite you guys out so that you know what time it is and what's going on. I could be doing something that might be uh, something specific for members. I'm just putting it out there for I want everybody to understand. Even if you're not a member, make sure you go over to the website and sign up there. Uh, not sign up, become, uh, um, become a... Make sure you go over there and become a member over there as well. That that doesn't cost you over there on the website to become a member. Uh, just make sure that I, I just want to go ahead and get everybody to know that I have content over there as well as far as articles and things of that nature. Yes, Coach, do a little writing. I, I got to get some things rolling. I got some I got some things got some things going on right now. So I'm just like, hey, man, it, 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 we, we, we rolling. We rolling. So Coach, just want, want everybody to make sure they go ahead, tune in, tap in, tell a friend of a friend. Come on in, because we're going to have a good time. But, guys, Coach, we're going to go ahead and get up on out this thing. But until next time, be the one and lead.